I think IO feels a bit like magic. It lets you leverage concurrency while using a single thread. If you think about it, it means that you can run multiple tasks and they will start, make progress and complete in overlapping period of time. And everything happens while the CPU is only ever working on a single thing at a time. But diving deep into the functioning of async IO is a topic for another video. Today I want to show you how you can control the concurrency, so you can make sure that a limited amount of tasks run at the same time. It's crucial in many scenarios. For instance, if you want to avoid getting your IP banned when you hit an API, or if you need to manage multiple connections to a database, or preventing your app from overloading a server. To do so, I will introduce you two powerful concurrency guards called the lock and the semaphore. Let's go. To explain how the lock and the semaphore works to control concurrency, we first need to make a simple example. And in this video, we'll build a simple crawler that given a list of URLs, will visit each URL and return their HTML as a text. So as you can see here, we have an array of URLs and we have a function that given a URL opens a client with HTTPX. It's not the most efficient. We could open it before and reuse it, but for the purpose of the example, we just open it every time. We make a query to get the HTML content and we return the text. Now, the goal is to showcase concurrency. So we want to start a bunch of tasks at the same time and let them make progress concurrently so they can finish faster. Here is how we do it. So we create a main function here that starts a timer. And then we create a task for each URL and we use asyncio gather to wait for all tasks to finish. So what happens here is if each task will be started concurrently and we will wait only the time of the slowest tasks in the end because all will make progress at the same time. If I run this code, here is what happens. So for each of the URLs, we see the message printed, scrapped URL, and we get finally the time it took to run everything. So as you can see here, it took one second, uh, 1.2 seconds. So relatively fast for scraping all those URLs. So let's take a quick look at a visualization so we can better understand what happened. So when we don't use any concurrency world, so we spawn all the tasks in parallel, here is what happens. We create all the tasks in the code using the, the function to scrap the, the websites. So all those functions will be called in parallel and be created as a task. So we have here a bunch of tasks, eight tasks. Now, when we call asyncio.gather, it will wait for all the tasks to complete, but they will all run concurrently. So here is what happens. Every task starts making a call to the URL. Now, you can imagine that if you have a lot of addresses to visit, it can be a problem because you can overload your network or you can also, if you scrape a single website, overload their server, getting as a result your IP band. The first and most simple primitive that allows you to control concurrency with asynchronous code is the lock. The lock is an object that only one task can acquire. So here is an example. Here I changed a bit the code to illustrate how the locks work. So I create a new function called lockdemo. It takes as an input a lock and an, a URL to scrape. The first thing that this function does is acquiring the lock. When you acquire the lock, you are the only one allowed to execute the code that is after the lock. So all the tasks will try to acquire the lock. The first one that acquires it has the right to execute. The other one will wait until they can acquire the lock after you release it. When you use a thing with lock, the lock is automatically released at the end of the with block. And now using the main lock function, we create a timer, create a lock, and we do exactly the same. We spawn all the tasks, but now each task has to acquire the lock before 
uh, being able to scrape the website. Now, if I go back and run the code, you can see that it will, it will take a lot more time because now every URL is scraped sequentially. You are not allowed to run multiple tasks at the same time. And as you can see, we take almost six seconds, which is uh, five times more, uh, five to six times more um, slower than the previous example with full concurrency. Here is a quick visualization to understand better what happened with the lock. So we create all the tasks and we await them with gather as before, but now each task has to gather the lock. So here's what happens actually. The first one acquires the lock, the other waits, and it can now execute and so on for all the tasks until all the tasks are done and the gather function returns with all the results from all the tasks. Finally, we can introduce the semaphore, which is another powerful guard for concurrency. It's very similar to the lock, but it's a lock with a higher capacity. So with the semaphore, you can give a number that controls how many tasks can run at the same time. So it's like a lock, but multiple tasks are able to grab it, but not more than the number you specify. So while those tasks execute, the other wait, and every time one task finishes and releases the semaphore, another one can grab it and make progress and so on. So here's the example. Here we still have our scrape URL, but now we have the semaphore demo. It's very similar, but now it takes a semaphore as the first parameter and the URL to scrap. Now we grab the semaphore here using the async quiz statement. We execute, we execute the scraping and we return. Our main semaphore function is the same. Uh, you have a starter that starts uh, to count the time and we create a semaphore with a capacity of four. Now we create a task for each URL to scrape and then we gather with asyncio. So pretty similar than before, but now four tasks at a time are able to pass the URLs. So now if I run the code, you can see that four at a time are able to grab the semaphore and every time one task is down, another one is able to acquire it and make progress and scrape the URL. If you see here, we take two, 2.3 seconds, so faster than the lock example, but a bit slower than the full concurrency example. But it's very useful because now we limited the concurrency to a given amount of, uh, of tasks, which makes our code faster, but we control so we don't overwhelm the network or the server we are scraping. And the final visualization to visualize the semaphore and make sure we understand it. So here you have the, the tasks that we created, so the eight tasks, and now here is what happens. Four tasks are able to uh, go through the semaphore. And here I make a special case when they all finish at the same time. If they all finish at the same time, the four others are able to go inside. But it's possible that it's not the case. And if only one task finishes, another one comes into the, the semaphore and is able to make progress. So that's it. We saw that you can control concurrency using the lock, which is the strictest form of control. Only one resource can acquire the lock at a, at a given time. Or the semaphore, which allows a bit more. You can give it a parameter that controls how many tasks will be able to acquire the semaphore at the same time. Those two controls are really powerful because when you use asyncio, it's easy to overwhelm resources by leveraging uncontrolled concurrency. So remember, next time you use asyncio, be careful about concurrency and use controls like lock and semaphore, which are really easy to use in Python. See you in the next one.